Malo le sefua and welcome to Pacific Pulse. I'm Clement Paligaru. Coming up... Stopping the tide in Samoa. Local action to fight climate change. Uncovering a rare collection of Pacific artifacts in Vanuatu. And the sounds of Sunday from Tonga. The Pacific is on the front line of climate change. But the people of the Pacific are fighting for their future. And in Samoa, Bernadette Nunn found communities working together to tackle this global problem at a very local level. The village of Saluafata once stretched into what is now sea. <laughs> 20 households lived where now there are only waves. The South Pacific Regional Environment Program says climate change is not news to most Pacific Islanders. You talk to you know, fisher folks, you talk to farmers, they've been talking about changes in climate for some time now, I mean years now. When you look at a lot of our, uh, of our islands, eh, mo about 75% of our communities and also the resources that we have are very close to the shore. Tonga, Fiji and so on, uh, the mean sea level rise is well above the global average of about 3 millimetres. People are seeing their homes being washed away every year by slowly eating away by the sea. The Pacific's priority now is adaptation, focusing on what people can do in the face of climate change. It's a new approach that begins in the village. They tell us what's happening in their villages, what Im impacts of climate change, and we compare it with the science of climate change, and then we bring in the most vital measures that they want to implement in their village level. The people of Saluafata decided a sea wall was their best protection. The village of Bayusu decided to replant mangroves, chopped down to reclaim land. It was one of the, the largest uh, mangrove area in the east of Polynesia. It's a really big area, it includes the whole Vayusu Bay, which starts from that peninsula and it extends all the way here. Because it's close to town, the capital city, um, yeah, that's the main reason why the majority of mangroves have been removed, is just to make more uh, land for a lot of the businesses. Locals hope the mangrove plantings will eventually help anchor the coastline against erosion. Saluafata also established a marine protection reserve. So I'm going to go to the city of Mangalia. I'm going to go to the city of Mangalia. Reef fish and other sea creatures are a major part of the Samoan diet, and giant clams that had disappeared from this area have now returned. But there's only so much the village can do to protect themselves against another severe cyclone, like Ofa in 1990. <laughs> 
e ole manatu. Ato unu e sili atu se si afianga i lole waita ini nei wai ai nei. People out there are doing their best, they're trying to do what they can, but we only emit 0.002% of the global emissions. E mo ile ele fisili, wa afia ka kou o ngo o fainga kukun uya mai fafua i kaka papai. We do not really see ourselves as victims, but most of our countries do have a, you know, very limited budgets. That is where the global community can assist. For Salua Fata, adaptation is not just about protecting their homes, but also preserving the sacred sites of their ancestors and passing on that heritage. <laughs> Our cultures will go, you know, our social systems and what, you know, makes the world much more interesting. And the whole world will be different. Many of the Pacific's traditional artifacts now sit in foreign museums, but in Vanuatu, Tane Nugen discovered a private collection of these rare relics at a museum with a difference. You can't miss the vibrant works of Aloy Pilioko in downtown Port Vila. The artist from Wallace Island is famous for his bold and bright representations of Pacific life. Along with his mentor and best friend, Russian artist Nikolai Mishatushkin, he has made Vanuatu his home, and together they've decided to give back to the region that's inspired their art. This outdoor museum is the centrepiece of the Mishatushkin Pilioko Foundation, set up to manage and preserve their private collection of traditional artefacts for future generations. I started collecting them in the 60s, so that means those pieces were not made for me. That means they have now minimum 60 years of age, but they are more than, uh, more than that, because they were drifting pieces that were disappearing pieces that we have bought from the, from the people. From New Guinea, from uh, Solomon, Tonga, Cook Island, every Samoa, Fiji. There are several thousand pieces in the collection, gathered in the decades since the pair first toured the South Pacific, exhibiting their own art. Every time having exhibition, every time collecting pieces, bringing them back and organising uh, uh, travelling exhibitions. They've taken their collection around the world and now most of the pieces are returning to the Pacific to be displayed here at the foundation, not behind glass cases under lights, but in the open air as their creators intended. All these artefacts all of a sudden talk to me and that's what we're trying to underline. Take time, just stop for a little while, come out of this uh, incredible hurried life that we are all leading in the big cities and in this place that we have created. Just try to relax and have a dialogue with all these pieces and see how these people sitting on the, practically on the soil, created beauty, their beauty around them by carving, by creating these various pieces. Thanks for watching Pacific Pulse. We leave you with the stunning voices of the congregation at the Fale Lotus Sa Paola Church in Tonga's capital, Nukualofa. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>